gonna be a good day. Hello, St. Rose. Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of St. Rose Rocks, music for the Golden Knights, by the Golden Knights. And happy December. I can pull out sweaters like these again. Who would have thought that we would have got to December out of all that went on this year? Regardless of how crazy 2020 has been, one thing that 2020 has not been short of is great music and great inspiration. And we got some of that for you today. We have Colombian singer-songwriter, Ria Carval. Ria, how you doing? Hello. Um, I'm doing great. Yeah. I'm very happy to hear. I, you got a lot of cool things going on right now. It's taken some time to get there, understandably, and we'll go into that. The first thing I want to ask, we start off many episodes this way. What was that initial spark that got you into music? What was that that brought you into this path? I guess I always like had it in me when I was little. I didn't have like the best experience in school. And so my parents just so, just so, I don't know how, that I like liked music. And they were like, let's just put her into like academy, you know, bring a little bit of happiness. And yeah, I got into a music academy and like, since I was like three, that has just been like my home. So uh, yeah, there's not really like a thing that has like got me into music. You know, I guess my parents just saw something, miracle. <laughs> they just saw it right from the beginning. So you went to a music academy then and all that. Could you tell us about your experience there? Well, I was in the music academy for a long time. I think I stopped being there when I was probably like 12. I should have, I should have stopped a long, <laughs> a long time before that, but like, um, yeah, it was just a really nice experience and like because I found like happiness in that place I didn't want to leave so until until I had to leave because there was like literally nothing for me left to do I did um, was on like the program that the music academy had so it was like five six years of like you know like music classes and stuff like that so you know you learn like to play the flute and like to play the uh, xylophone and like all that stuff. <laughs> and then after I graduated from that, I was on like the vocal class, like vocal classes. And then I was like singer for the or orchestras and bands that they had there. I also learned how to play clarinet. So I might not remember, but I used to play clarinet and I was part of the band and the orchestra there. It was mostly that. Very multi-talented, and it gave you a great scope of things. That's really cool. We mentioned before a Colombian singer-songwriter. You're from Colombia, correct? Yes, I am. Tell us about the, your early days living in Colombia, and then how you came to St. Rose in New York, of all places, from, going from Colombia to New York. Tell us about uh, your time in Colombia, and then how you stumbled upon St. Rose. So in Colombia, uh, I grew up uh, like after the acad academy thing, I also started having like particular classes with different teachers. Yeah, I had like classes for piano, classes for guitar, classes for singing, classes for production and classes for music theory and pretty much everything. Cause I mean, I just really liked it. I was also part of the high school. It was a high school rock band, uh, like two years before I graduated. I was like, I want to study music. <laughs> like, you know, you just come to that, like, realization. Like, I want to study music. Obviously, I knew since that moment that that was not going to be in Colombia because um, I always wrote my music in, in, in English. Well, not really always. But, like, seven up, since I was seven years old, I would write my music in English. Obviously, at seven years old, it was pretty rough. But, like... <laughs> um, you got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> for real. <laughs> uh, actually, like, the song that... One of the songs that we're going to talk about... We'll get there later, but, like, one of the songs that we're going to talk about... The first, first version of it, I wrote it at seven years old. Yeah, I knew that my music was in English. I knew that, like, I'm mostly, like, a pop artist. I was like, I'm not about to, like, do reggaeton. And, like, if you don't want to do, like, reggaeton or DJ or being a teacher, there's no music career for you in Colombia. Like there's none, it's just, yeah. So I knew that I had to get out of there. Basically my school didn't have any counselors or anything. So I didn't know how the process of like applying for colleges and all that stuff worked. So I started just emailing a bunch of colleges that I found. I found same roles on a billboard article as like the, the music industry program was on the top 10 uh, contemporary programs for music in the United States. So I found that program there and that's how I found about St. Rose. And 
St. Rose was one of the few colleges that like actually answered all of the questions that I have. So since the very beginning, they were like super welcoming and like, you know, they were like a whole family. And then my only way to communicate with people over there was on emails. The main reason why I ended up in St. Rose, obviously, but that's like, that, that's something that you really shouldn't feel like bad about because it's a really good thing about St. Rose is the financial aid. <laughs> It was the only college that gave me enough financial aid for me to be like, okay, I have enough for the first semester. <laughs> uh, and every single semester has been like that, like up till now. I still don't even know if I'm going to be able to come back next semester. I never know. But like, yeah, I, all I needed was like that confirmation that like if I had the money for the first semester, that means that I'm meant to go there. And so here I am. <laughs> there you are. And it's funny that you mentioned that billboard article. So many people have said uh, going into the industry department that they have found that article. Help! I found that article. A teacher sent it to me, actually. So since being at St. Rose, what can you say about what you have learned and grown upon within the department? I've learned a lot of English words. <laughs> A lot of new vocabulary. Music specifically, theory stuff and ear training, I've always been good at it. So that wasn't something like new to me. I would say definitely this semester, because I'm a junior right now, like this semester, that I don't have all those classes that it's like, okay, free pass. <laughs> like, yeah, I have learned a lot of new things. And I've also discovered kind of like more of like what I'm actually into, you know? Like, it's like, yeah, like I am a singer, songwriter, producer, dancer. That's what I have everywhere. But then... Yeah, I've recently discovered, I'm like, you know, I actually really don't like producing. <laughs> like, sure, I do it. I know how to do it. But like, with the process, it's like, I've discovered that songwriting is something that I just love with like, all my heart. I just do it naturally. I love singing. I love performing. I love dancing. Dancing, actually, I didn't do dancing until I came to sing Rose. Oh, really? Like, I knew that I, knew that I could dance. But like, I didn't have time to like, get into, you know, like, dance classes or the dance team or... And then Colombia also has this like very weird culture where everyone has to like fit in, in some sort. People don't like do things to stand out. Being a singer already was standing out. So like, how is I going to be singer and dancer? Like dancing is a passion of mine that came up here in San Rose. And I'm actually right now like the dance captain for Sabor Latino for the dance team that we have on campus. So yeah, I came out of nowhere. Now I'm dance captain. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you do discover a lot of things in college, definitely. Oh, that's really cool that you're able to discover that part about yourself. And the thing about producing, it's all good. It's good to know it, but it's all good if that's not where your passion is. You got the passion in the songwriting, you got the passion in the singing, you got passion in the dancing, and that's great. And that's cool that you've been able to learn that as you've been going along. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And like working with, like, I love, I love seeing my song come to life. But like, I've just realized that like producing, it just takes me a lot of time, me, because I'm such a perfectionist. And I've done producing with other people now. And I know the experience and I feel like it's just easier. And it's more like lightweight because I can like tell them like, this is what I'm thinking of. And they do it. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I don't know. I like it more. The collaboration but brings something extra out. Yeah, exactly. They also have ideas that you're like, oh, that sounds like really nice. And I didn't think about it before. So... Two heads are better than one sometimes, and it's awesome the things that you can combine together to make an awesome product. That's cool that you've been uh, getting that experience. As we've been talking to everybody else, COVID. For the College of St. Rose, it was March 11th that everything shut down. What was that time period like for you when everything shut down, and how did that impact your 2020? That It was crazy, to be honest. This is going to be a lot more personal than like music-wise. Oh, I mean, right now, I am on my house. I have a house. Um, but back then, I didn't. I was living on campus, and I have no family in the United States. So I had to go back to my country. Luckily, I found... Because what, what's funny, too, is that they closed borders, like, literally, like, two days after the thing was announced. So I literally had to, like, rush the next day right after the thing came up and be like, okay, rush to the next flight and get home because then they wouldn't even receive me in Colombia if I took longer. I had to do that. And when I did that, I left everything that I had built in here. It felt like that. And when I came back, it was actually like that. 
Uh, I left everything that I had built in here before. The thing that I would like think of as my life, you know, all the connections that I had, all the friends that I had, all the relationships that I had, all of that disappeared. And I knew that I knew that that was going to happen. <laughs> so it was pretty rough for me. And yeah, definitely when I went back to Colombia, there was a whole like two months that I did like nothing. Like I would like, okay, just do the homeworks. Then it was done. And I would literally wake up to eat, work out, sleep, and read. That would be everything that I did. And I felt so stuck because I hate feeling stuck. And like this pandemic just makes everyone feel stuck. It just made me depressed <laughs> at some point in that like process of like discovering how it was to live only with myself because yeah I was with my parents and stuff but like as I said I left everything behind I knew that everything was gone after accepting that I started feeling like you know I want to prove myself that I can that I can keep going and so that's when I decided to drop reflections which is one of the songs that we're going to talk about today from there on I've just keep going and going and things have been getting better like something that definitely happened though and still affected me <laughs> is that I couldn't come back to uh, college when I was supposed to because Colombia still had the borders closed so I came back here a whole month after classes had started which was terrible <laughs> I bet. I, at, up to this day I am still one month late in homework so yeah that happened but like We'll work in it. I feel like as long as like you let go of the things that you can't control, there are things that you can work with and you would just try to make the best out of them. I feel like that's just been like the biggest learning for everyone right now. It's a very optimistic way of looking at things. And I think that's also a very mature way of looking at things. So kudos to you on that. Since you brought it up, might as well get into it. The song that you're going to be, one of the songs you're going to be showing us, Reflections. Tell us about that process of how you got Reflections out. All right, so Reflections, um, that is a song that I wrote about something that happened to me here. Not gonna lie, it was traumatizing. <laughs> it's one of those experiences that you're never forgetting. Um, but yeah, I was in a really, really low place. I would say my lowest ever in my life. And I was here in United States the pandemic kind of had already started, had it? It was in spring break. Okay. So like, yeah, it had started, but then it was still like that moment where the college and United States in general hadn't like acknowledged that it was that important, but we knew it was happening. So it was in spring break. I was here alone because everyone left and I had work every day. I was like, you know, I'm staying because why not? And then just work, get some money. Um, and so, yeah, since I was staying alone, there was just this one day where I just felt like I needed to let everything out. And I found the Reflections is one of the songs that I haven't produced myself. It's a beat that I actually found on YouTube. <laughs> and I ended up like, you know, negotiating with the, with the producer and everything. And he gave me the beat. Um, obviously, I had to pay him and everything. But like, I, I, I was just looking at stuff on YouTube and I found his beat. And he just completely like, I felt it, you know? And just as soon as I felt it, I just started writing lyrics out. A lot of the times when I write lyrics, for me, it's like a diary. It's like, it's like I, I just write what I feel, and then I see if it works. <laughs> and so, I, but I already had the beat, so it was a lot easier. I just wrote that whole thing on spring, spring break. And then after spring break ended, the person that used to help me with the recording and everything uh, like came back and I was like, I need to record this song. And he was like, okay. So I came by one day. That was the day that they announced the, the pandemic, that they were closing the school and everything. That day that I recorded Reflections, it happened in the middle of the recording. Um, I was, yeah, I started recording it and I did one take and that was it. <laughs> I recorded it. I literally recorded it, one take. Then I cried and then... <laughs> And then he was like, uh, that is the best song that you've done so far. I don't think we have to record more. And I was like, okay. And then the message came and then I just kept crying. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, what a crazy experience for you with that. Definitely. Um, but yes, after that happened, uh, reflections kind of just stayed there because the pandemic happened. I went back to Colombia. I didn't communicate with anyone. When I decided that I wanted to keep going, I was like, okay, I have this song that I already recorded. Might as well release it. I went back to talking with the person that helped me record it. He sent me the, the things. I like to edit the vocals myself, although I don't mix them because then for some reason, mixing is not my talent. <laughs> he helped me mix them. And then I just took a picture, put everything together. And then I put it on DistroKid. And then DistroKid was, was like, okay, in three weeks. And I was like, bet, three weeks. And then I decided that I wanted Reflections to be more than what I had done before because before it was like okay like I release the song it's as simple as that you know like I just put it there and then I just create some buzz in social media but that's not what promotion actually is and so I decided that I was gonna do promotion for real and so all those three weeks I just did very 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 intense research on everyone that I could reach out to um I did a list of blogs, magazines, TVs, radios, everything that I could do. And a week before, which should be earlier, this is a little tip, earlier than a week before, (laughs) I started sending emails with pitches to everyone. And that is how Reflections was the first song ever that got over 7K streams in music. So yeah, it was, it was like really good. And it was all because of that, you know, that showed me that I was capable of, you know, I was capable of doing what I wanted to do and I could keep going. No, of course. And that's exactly what you need to do. Very often I found, especially in college communities and, you know, musicians starting off, they'll just release the song into the void. It'll get the buzz amongst friends and family for a little bit, and then it drops off, unfortunately. And it could be fantastic music, but if you don't follow up and you don't do the legwork with it before and after, it's kind of hard to get that momentum that you want. So I'm glad that you were like, you know, let me do this. And that's awesome. That is so cool. Yeah, and the thing is that a lot of people just expect it to like, you know, just, you know, it's so good, it's going to go viral. Uh, it doesn't. <laughs> when songs go viral, is because they put a lot of money into it. I didn't have that much money, much money actually for reflections. All I did was like reaching out. But like something that you should also expect when you reach out to people, you need to do a really, really long list because from a list of like a hundred, only two probably reply. Nope, I know that a hundred percent. Been there, done that. But it's uh, <laughs> it's. It's great when you do get that yes. It's like, okay, like, yeah, I sent, I shoot a thousand emails, but then you get like two back and you feel like they have this person ever. It's like, these two people thought that my music was good enough. Exactly. So that's fantastic. So for everybody to listen to right now, I think without further ado, we've talked about the song enough. This is Reflections by Rhea Carval. Oh, 
One thing I definitely got to say, I love the optimism that you're bringing to this interview. And I just love uh, just the uh, really reflective and open, bright perspective that you're bringing. So thank you for bringing that to this interview. It's okay. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I hope other people can feel it too, because, you know, we got to feel better. Oh, yeah. And I think definitely can get that through things like this, through music and all that. And continuing on with the music. Tell us about the second song you're going to be showing us, Meant to Be. All right. So Meant to Be, um, in chronological order, it came before Reflections. Reflections was the first single of 2020. Uh, Meant to Be was my first single ever. So it was like my debut single on 2019. This song came out in July of 2019. This is the song that I was telling you guys about that I started writing it when I was seven years old. So... Yeah, I wrote a version of Meant to Be, very, very weird version of Meant to Be when I was seven. Obviously, my English vocabulary was limited to less than 20 words. Uh, but <laughs> we created something there. And trust me, when I, came, when I came back to it, I came back to it when I was like 12. When I was 12, I was like, you know, I want to go through like my little song book because I had a song book. Now it's just the, the notes on the phone. <laughs> but like, oh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, and I went back to it and I was like, well, I really like this song. When I was 12, I redo the lyrics, so they made a little bit more sense, but I still didn't release it. Meant to be is part of an EP that came out in 2019 as well. And that EP, I actually produced it and recorded it all when I was back in Colombia. But it all dropped in 2019. So you're like, what? Yeah, it dropped two years later <laughs> because um, I, did, I even did like a showcase and everything. And I was supposed to drop it before I came to the States for the very first time. But then I decided not to because I just felt like something in me was telling me that it wasn't ready. And so I saved it. And then a whole year later, I changed all the lyrics to meant to be because now the song actually meant something to me. Like before, it was like, you know, meant to be is a really cool song about first love, but I hadn't had my first love. When I wrote, when I rewrote meant to be, I was thinking about a specific person, you know, my first love. Um, so yes, uh, it meant something to me and I feel like that just made the whole song a lot better. And yeah, I recorded it on summer, on summer of 2019. And then I decided to release it in July. Um, and that was it about there. Cause I didn't know anything about promotion. I didn't know anything. About, I mean, I was just starting with social media, you know, it did, it did well, but like well enough for a debut single, you know? 
Then after that, on fall of 2019, I was like, I want to make a music video for it. So my music goes through different eras. What I want to show with my music is like the process of life, you know, how you like feel different in different stages of your life. So I call it era, it's more like stages, right? So the first stage on my story, we actually like my, my music actually has a storyline. So like, if you want to know about the storyline, it's on my website. The storyline starts on meant to be. So meant to be is the first era. And so because it's the first era, right now we're going into the second one. Because it's the first era, I wanted to have a visual representation of it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do a music video for meant to be. And we created this whole choreography uh, on fall 2019. I created it myself with two other friends. And then we did auditions. We got some dancers. We did two shoots for dancing and three other shoots for just, you know, like what, what an actual music video is. We've had like three days of shooting. It was a long process. And then out of nowhere, um, basically the photographer, for some reason, thought that nothing would happen if he left his car unlocked. And very unfortunately, everything got stolen. So it is a very impactful story and I'm very sad. And to be honest, so many things were happening in my life that I didn't even thought of it, of like how much I lost. I felt more like how much he lost because I wasn't his only client. Like oh, he yeah. lost all his cameras, all his hard drives, everything. So it, yeah, it was tragic. <laughs> the point is that we lost everything. And then after that, winter came. And if you guys hear meant to be, meant to be isn't a winter song <laughs> like it's, it's like a summer song maybe even like fall ish so we were like okay let's just wait for spring and then the pandemic came and there's that so right now uh very recently yeah very recently um meant the meant to be performance video came out uh so if you guys want to go check it out it's actually on youtube the performance video is basically what we did on the music video without the other three shots, just the two shots of dancing. So now that I have uh, management, uh, she like my manager helped me find um, dancers and someone that was able to do the video. And we did auditions and then we just shoot these two. We shoot this on a day and got everything ready, edited and it's out. Yeah. <laughs> what a crazy ride. Oh my a whole, gosh. A whole year later. A whole year later. But you know what? It's, um, it, it's fascinating how the song has grown with you for so long. As you have grown as a songwriter, the song has grown and the, the process was not exactly the one that you thought was going to be, but it's the one that happened and it's finally here and kudos to you for all that you had to go through, and I feel bad for the photographer too. <laughs> all that, my gosh. Yeah, and like definitely something that like like everyone told me, my parents, even my manager told me, like I should just give up on it. It was like you know, like this song came out a whole year ago. Like, why would I try to make a video now? She was like, just keep going. But I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, I did this whole dance for a whole month. Well, not whole month, whole semester. So a lot more. Um, I did this whole music video. All of these happened, but I can't leave the first era, which is the most important one, is where it starts, without any visuals. I was like, no, I'm not giving up on it. And now it's out. So I feel like it, it paid off. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, it wasn't what I expected it to be. But like some people say, like, you know, it was a whole year ago. It's over. It's not over. Like the song didn't do as much as I could. And there's such thing as like bringing back oh, yeah. what you worked so hard on. So that's what I did. So I'm very happy that I didn't give up on it. Congratulations to you, honestly, the determination that you had to bring this full circle and create what you knew what it could completely be. Um, I think 2020 for a lot of artists kind of had broken up a lot of our syn synchronizations and how we have been processing a lot of things. And I think that's a really cool promotional technique that you're using to, in order to bring people in and have that crowd engagement and get them really into this song, bring them into not just the past, help them understand that, but also bring into your now. So that's really cool. So for everybody to check out on St. Rose Rocks, this is Meant to Be by Rhea Carval.
Thank you so much for being on this episode of St. Rose Rocks. We greatly appreciate it. Can you please let everybody know watching where they can find your music and where they should go follow you? Of course. So, um, yeah, I am Ria Carval in pretty much every platform. So Facebook, Ria Carval, YouTube, Ria Carval, my website, riacarval.com, so riacarval.com. Um, and then in Instagram, it's I am Ria Carval, although I'm thinking of changing that to just Ria Carval. But for now, even if you text Ria Carval, you'll find it. I am Ria Carval. And then in Spotify and Apple Music, Deezer, all of those platforms, Ria Carval as well. I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, that, that helps. Easy to find. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. This has been great. Thank you so much for being on this episode and all the best to you moving forward. And I hope you enjoy all the holidays coming, coming up too. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed them too. And I hope all of you spend some time with your families and, you know, being cozy, uh, take advantage of that time. I love Christmas. It's my favorite season. Heck yeah. 
And I think we're all going to, I think we're all going to really appreciate it this year for sure with everything going on. So again, thank you so much. And thank you to all of you for tuning in to this episode of St. Rose Rocks. As always, I got to thank Student Development, Student Association, and the college marketing team, along with the college as a whole. We greatly appreciate you guys checking out and supporting some fantastic Golden Knight music. Really appreciate you. You guys are the reason that St. Rose Rocks. We're glad we get to spend some time. <laughs>